In this video, I will give you 50 Rome 2 facts that you don't want to miss. So the first important one to know is that camel archers can't shoot backwards like normal horse archers can. And this makes them totally useless, so never bring them into battle. The next hard fact is that only these units in the game that you now see on the screen got 5 pila rounds. And if you haven't been living under a rock, using pila effectively is the meta at this moment. The next fact that people got to understand is that large funds is much more fun and much better to play competitively but also for fun compared to ultra funds. I understand if you're a newer player, Ultra funds is better because you can bring more elite units with higher armor etc which means missile units will do less damage so you can make more mistakes but once you understand the game a little bit start using large funds and you will see it's so much more fun and the next fact with that is now that they removed the chat if you want to host a lobby you got to put the rules in the game name so like one two four only grand campaign etc the other fact that new players that play ultra funds got to understand is that you got to start with putting your graphics at ultra low if every new player does this that will decrease the lag in games by like 50%. So make sure you do that immediately. And if you're going to play multiplayer battles, put the battle difficulty at normal. Don't put it hard or very hard, etc. Because if you don't put it at normal, you won't see the arrow tower ranges, which is very important to know. So the difficulty must be normal. Remember that. And don't forget, if you want to share this info with your friends or other people, make sure to share it and let everyone know about these important facts. The next hard fact is that the archer unit can fire 1,800 arrows, and people still manage to get sometimes only 100 kills on the archer unit. <laughs> so that's a little funny fact. Slingers got 3000 stones to sling with 8 armor piercing damage and that makes them so powerful. Balearic slings only got 11 less damage than the most damaging archer in the game and got almost twice as many stones. And that is why you see sometimes people with 200-300 kills on Balearic or Rhodian slingers. Furthermore, not a lot of people know which archer is really stronger, the Syrian archer or the Cretan archer. In a one-on-one -on -one missile fight, the Cretan archer will win, but the Smyrian heavy archer is the best archer in the game. And the other fact is that Rhodian slingers beat Balearic slingers. Talking about missile units, the Mercedes and heavy peltas is the best peltas unit in the game. The next hard fact is that spears are overall weaker than swords in Rome 2. Talking about spears, putting your hoplite into hoplite wall will give your unit 5 bonus versus infantry. Next up is the fact that the studio formation will give you 35% missile block chance on top of your 50% that you already got as a Roman unit. Talking about Roman units, there's always a big debate about which unit is more cost effective, the Evocati cohort or the armored legionaries. Well, I will give you this fact, it's the Evocati cohort, just trust me on this one. For the more are Galatians Swords the best low tier in the game, Tribal Warriors the best mid tier in the game, and Disciples of the Epidemic from Kush the best high tier in the game. But that does not always mean it's a smart choice to bring it into battle, because they got very low armor. Next up is the fact that Strategist is the best standard general ability for all factions and generals. But the absolute best general ability is the Ariovistus ability, but only the faction Swaby can bring that. Talking about general abilities, not a lot of people know that the Battle Rhythm ability from the Strategist General will give your unit extra speed. So if you're trying to catch a unit, or you're trying to escape from a unit, Make sure to give your unit battle rhythm and it will start running faster. The next fact is that the giant ballista, which is the only artillery unit people bring, got 60 stones that they can fire. If you select your artillery and press ALT, you can target a place that you want to fire at. This way you don't have to target at one specific unit. And another fact is that you should never use explosive rounds with your artillery. Furthermore, it takes 17 fire shots to break a tower, but if you use standard rounds, it takes 21 stones to break an arrow tower. Furthermore, is normal shot more accurate than fire shot? So you should use standard rounds if you target infantry, because you will hit way more units, and use fire rounds to break tower or walls. It will take you 14 fire shots to break a wall and if you use standard rounds it will take you 18 shots. So use fire shots to break buildings. But I wouldn't use it to break down Greek walls because you got tortoises and it takes only 7 hits from a tortoise to break a wall and those 7 hits take only 20 seconds. Talking about tortoises, these are the only factions now on the screen that can bring tortoises. The maps that you see on the screen right now are all the best and most fair land battle maps that are most fun to play on. The next fact is that the Iceni Gorilla unit is the only unit in the whole game that can spell Getty line. For the people who've seen this particular video, I explained over there how a unit with loose formation can also spaghetti line, but you got to glitch it out. The next fact is that the Sabian Sword is the fastest infantry unit in the game. It's just crazy how fast it is. The Amazonian Horse Archers are the fastest calf unit in the game, and this unit is also at the same time the fastest unit in the game. Another nice fact is that you're attacking Siege Towers got a Scorpion on top of it, and this Scorpion got 23 Scorpion Bolts, and this will be out of ammo after 2 minutes and 20 seconds. So once you see on the clock the minute 57.40, 
city, all of the scorpions on top of the towers will be out of ammo. Talking about scorpions, a normal scorpion unit got 160 bolts in it, and each bolt can kill two people, unless you're firing at the royal spartan or a oath swarm. One royal spartan can absorb one scorpion bolt, because they're chats. So 160 scorpion bolts can potentially kill 320 units. If anyone had more kills than 320 on a scorpion unit, send me a screenshot, because that would be crazy. The next fact is that most bar factions are stronger than greek factions, and the best ships to take for naval battles are the artillery ships, because you can manually fire them and destroy the enemy boats from afar and once the enemy ships are getting closer you just ram them and break the ships next up is the fact that extra large settlements don't give you a bigger city to attack or defend on compared to large settlements it will only give the arrow towers scorpion bolts which makes defending much too easy so never put your settlement on extra large furthermore are corners the best places to attack cities and if you have defended a city once you know that you can mount some buildings and these buildings that you see now on the screen are the only buildings that you can mount in this game but the other fact is that these buildings are very easy to break with your artillery and will kill all the units on top of it and around it. But these are not the only buildings that can break. Also non-mountable buildings can break, just like the Colosseum that I showed in the previous video and other random buildings here and there. The next fact is that if you put your archers into melee mode, it will look like their archers are out of ammo and your enemy won't shoot at it. The other fact is that there is a tournament going on right now with an $800 prize pool. Me and Pixelated Apollo are also playing in the tournament and if you want to join the next tournament, make sure to join the Discord. And the last fact is that the Kokin Nobles is the best looking unit in the game. If you disagree, fight me little bitch.